from Paramount Pictures in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. You are my radio daddy. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio with an email from a listener who signs under the pseudonym John Doe. John Doe writes... I have been married for 15 years. Have two beautiful children. Whom I stop at no end to make sure they have the best of everything. By the way, it's who, not whom. But what are you going to do? My wife is an amazing and dynamic woman who is also extremely successful. We evenly share our family responsibility for the most part though I think I bear more of it, and live a nice lifestyle, though we could live with a lot less crap than we currently have crowding our home. The issue at hand is not so much home life, though we have issues like everyone else. It's more about our children's grandparents, my in-law. They are wonderful, loving people with not a bad bone in their bodies. Most people tell me how cool they are. And I always agree. All that being said leaves a dark shadow that they never planned for their later years when they stop working. There have been many discussions about getting them on track. But there has never been the execution. Remember, says John Doe, 15 years of marriage plus four years of dating equals 19 years of discussion and no action. Now they are much closer to that age where health, ability to work, and no nest egg is approaching. Needless to say, I have a huge problem with that. I have worked so hard to raise my family, which still has a long way to go. Tried to help my family, and I'm now faced with the reality where I might have to care for my in-laws. Tom, I really love them, as they're wonderful people, awesome grandparents, and just... Who uses this phrase anymore? Good eggs. <laughs> John must be a little older than the average listener, I have a feeling. I cannot and will not take them in if and when that becomes a reality. This is the in-laws. It's not far off, but definitely lingering. I know my wife would take them in in a heartbeat. And when that day comes, I can no longer stay. Yes, I said it. I will leave my home and family come the day they move in. I will still be the great father I am and be very active in my kids' lives. But I will not reside with my in-laws in my home. I did not work all these years and try to help them, only to take care of them. Sure, things happen over life, and if something devastating happened, of course my actions would be different. 
But when something has been discussed again and again with no action, I feel differently. Tom, please help your audience understand that it's not just their careers and their earnings they need to make are secure. It's those of the extended family as well. I am writing this knowing that all involved are also listeners of the show, so I will end this with a different name to protect myself and my dignity. Sincerely, John Doe. John and I are in the same camp on this issue. In my last prenuptial agreement, I had a clause in it that specifically stated that no relatives would be allowed to live in the home, no money would be lent or given to family members, and that uh, we would not be buying any houses for anybody, we would not be renting anybody apartments, we would not be renting out guest houses, we just wouldn't be doing it. And uh, in that particular case, uh, the attitude was, and on my behalf, you know, if, if, if you don't want that in the prenup, I'm not going to marry you. It's that simple. My parents died. My dad died in 1995. My mom died in, my, died in 1998. So I will never be in a position of having to support my parents, nor will I be in a position of having to ask someone else to help me support my parents. It's not an issue. Nor will I ever have my parents moving in with me, nor will I ever be asked to have them move in with me. And not only would I not have them move in with me, they, and I know this because we discussed it, they wouldn't want to. After my dad died, my mom lived another three years, and I was on the phone with her one day, and I said, Mom, I'm going to send you a plane ticket. Why don't you come out and spend a little time here? Just come out for a few weeks. My mom wouldn't accept a plane ticket. Not even a plane ticket. She wouldn't come out to visit. My mom died never having seen California or my house, ever. I've lived in California. Next year it'll be 20 years, and she never came here to visit. So it was never an issue for me. And because it's not an issue for me, I don't see why I would ever have to accept the idea that somebody else's parents are then my responsibility. Keep in mind, I'm the big wallet. I'm the seven-figure income. I'm the self-made multimillionaire. I'm the one people come to for money. When money is needed, people come to me. And if I'm in a relationship, if I'm in a relationship, of course, I don't see why your parents' financial problems should ever become my problems. I don't see why your parents' medical problems should ever become my problems. I don't see why your slacker brother or your lazy slut sister... Uh, should ever be my financial responsibility, why they should ever live in my house, even for a, a short period of time. I don't understand it. And yet, in many homes, it's pretty much understood and accepted that this is the way things are. I've told you I, I tend to date Latin women. And in Latin culture, that's pretty much the way it is. If your parents aren't already living with you and going on your honeymoon with you, Ultimately, one day when they're unable to pay the mortgage anymore, you're going to pay it. And by you, I mean you, because they're your parents, and then whoever you marry, you're going to get them in on it. Whoever your boyfriend is, you're going to get him in on it. You need to help me. I have had women over the years ask me to help their grandparents, help their parents, lend the family money. And yes who told me that, uh, for example, I, in one of my marriages, I was with a woman of Latin heritage who told me that uh, once her father died, her mother was going to come move in with us. And I really had no say in it, I was told. She's long gone. I completely understand what John Doe is saying. If I work hard and I save and I invest, remember those stupid 
fairy tales like the tortoise and the hare or the ant and the grasshopper. Yeah, and the grasshopper, the ants work slowly building their little ant hill and they're so industrious that the grasshopper just hops around. Like, ultimately, should the ant support the grasshopper? Absolutely not. If I work hard, I save, I invest. Over the years, I've given up vacations. I have given up living in better houses than I live in. I've, I've given up living, uh, 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 driving better cars. I mean, all, over the years, I've always driven a car that's less than what I could afford. And I've done this so that my life would be secure. Why would I want to support people who never paid any attention to this, never saved, never invested, never planned, didn't put money in their IRA, didn't have a 401k? They just spent, they set themselves on cruises, and they set themselves on big vacations, and they bought houses that were bigger than what they could afford, and they spent a fortune on lawn care and swimming pools and all that suburban stuff people spend money on, all that crap people spend money on. And then later on, when they can't afford it, as 65-year-olds or 70-year-olds, I'm supposed to step in having saved and invested all these years and support these people? Absolutely not. I completely understand where John Doe is coming from. Yet, if John Doe ever gets divorced, if he lives in California, and I suspect by certain elements of his email that he does, he's been married more than 10 years, he's been married 15 years. He'll be paying vagina money to his wife, and that money will be going to help support her parents. That's where it's going. That's where it's going. Trust me when I tell you. Also, the large amount of child support that will be awarded. Some of that will go to the cause, too. But I completely understand You've worked all these years. You were hoping at one point to uh, to retire, or you were hoping at one point the kids leave home and you and your wife get to spend some time traveling, seeing the world, cruising, whatever. Now you've got to take her elderly parents in who never made any plans for the future. I completely understand you being angry about this, and I completely understand you wanting to leave. Let me ask the people listening to this show, how do you feel about this? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Jesus Christ, Tom, it's great to talk to you. The Tom Likas Show. Woo! It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. You know, if I take you on, I'm not taking on the losers you grew up with. Your parents who never put any money away, never saved, always spent beyond their means. Your alcoholic sister, your slacker brother who always tells you he's, he's up for a bunch of jobs, never happens to get any of them. I'm just not taking care of them. I understand where the letter writer is coming from here. Veronica on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Hey, just wanted to share um, my uh, experience, I should say, with uh, my husband's family. It's quite amazing. Um, he His family lives in Mexico, and he has a couple brothers here. And uh, he's always wanting to help every single uh, member of the family, of his family. It's very frustrating for me. And did you discuss this before you got married? You know what, Tom? My my mistake. We got married after four months. Um, four months after we met, it was it was a huge mistake. Oh, that is a huge mistake. I know. I know now. <laughs> a little late, but I know now. And now you're stuck with them. Um, I guess it's a matter of, of having the balls to make a decision more than anything else. Um, I have a one-year-old daughter. It makes it harder. <laughs> uh, we're both working people. It's not like we have, um, you know, properties or anything like that. What about um, children? What about what? Did you go ahead and have children with a guy you knew only four months? Uh, yes, you did, didn't we, you? 
Well, you know what? We we didn't really dis- we discussed a few things, but not until you, you live with a person, you find out. You know, of course, in my case, because I I didn't know him and he didn't know me really. And you went ahead and had kids with him too, right? I did. Uh, we had a child after two years and a half of marriage. I've been married for three and a half, and. Um, I don't know if it was mistake if it was a mistake or not now that I that I'm in that situation. I love my child like you can't imagine but um you know it's it's not the best thing to to have a not good marriage and then a child. What was your rush to get married? You were over 30, you were worried you were getting older. What was the big rush? I think it was that. I mean, if I'm honest to myself and and you guys, um I think it was because I was getting older. I was 32, almost 33 when I got married. I was afraid of loneliness, I guess. I'm I, I'm sure that's what it is. But you weren't afraid of a bad marriage based on marrying somebody who you hardly know. Uh, I was a little bit afraid, but... Um, I thought I had, um, I, I thought I could deal with it. I remember I told a friend of mine, I, she said, what if it, did, if it doesn't work out? And I said to her, you know, if it doesn't work out, I'll just divorce and that's it. But uh, it's not that easy. I'm actually going through a bunch of situations right now with that. And how do you actually, what do you mean you're going through a bunch of situations with that? Oh, besides the family um, issue with his family. Um, there's other problems. Of course, you know, it's to expect if I didn't know the guy well like I should have. Uh, things like um, uh, we have a personality issue. <laughs> it's uh, where we have a strong uh, personality, both of us. And so you fight a lot. Yes. yes. And were any of these personality problems or issues or differences in values obvious to you before you had a baby? No. No, it was... So everything was great till you had a baby? Yes. Well, no. You know what? You are right. It was before I had the baby. Then why yes. why, why would you have a baby with somebody if, if that's how it's going? Uh, I think there was something that I wanted, regardless. Yeah, but, but couldn't you wait until you found somebody else? I think I was scared, Tom. It's, um, you're right. It's, uh... I should have waited. On the other side, my um, I, I was afraid of not finding somebody at my age. Time click, you know the. the well, the after, after things I'm, after things so don't scared. work out with your husband, and there you are with your kid. Yeah. Uh, is that going to be good for your kid? No. 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 It's not. No. It's so not. you see, this was all about you. And you weren't really concerned about the effect on the kid. You wanted to have a kid because you wanted to have a kid. That's it. Did you care about what kind of life the kid would live or what would end up happening if things didn't work? Out? No, you just went right ahead and did it. I think I was more selfish, yes. Yes, you're right. I, I feel, you know, it's, it's kind of a... Uh, I'm, I'm ashamed now of, of, of that because she's now going through it. How so? Well, she's. She, I think babies do feel when things are wrong, and you mean you when know. the two of you are screaming at each other? Yes. I'm sure she feels that. Yes. Babies are not stupid, you know. They're human beings. Yeah, I I didn't know that before, and I I think I was too selfish to really, you know, um, when I made the decision, I was too selfish to to be, you know, more uh, aware of it. And I'm, you know, it's kind of late now, but going back to that family <laughs> thing that you were talking about earlier, it's um, it's quite amazing how um, my husband just uh, wants to solve uh, everybody's situation. Of course, the money situation with his family, it's uh, whatever they need, he's wanting to send money and he sends money sometimes and sometimes he doesn't because I have to fight with him before that. I, I work, you know, I work hard, he works hard and uh, the father does not work. He's healthy, probably healthier than my parents. Both my parents work. Both my parents take care of um, the grandchildren. 
uh, when they can. And um, and his parents just uh, they just want money and want money. The sisters are married. There, he has a sister that is a grandmother, and she wants money. She has a husband and everything. And it's uh, I I mean there was a time when I told him it's it's either me or your family because I'm really tired of it. Well, you told him that, but then you stayed. I well, he made he made a few changes, but there's starting again you know he's starting to send money again and that kind of thing so i i don't think that's going to change ever it's not it's not going to change it's not but well, <laughs> you did not you didn't take the time to get to know this guy yes yeah I, and I, uh, you didn't have a prenup no mm -hmm. it was my it was my mistake because i i know i i had control over it and i didn't do what i was supposed to so how long are you going to stay in this uh, you know, we're going through, uh, uh, divorce talks right now. Um, I'm not sure, Tom. It's really, uh, it's, like I said, it's a matter of decision of me having the balls to, to find, to say I have to win this. And, uh, you're not happy. He's taking I, your I'm money and sending it to his family. You're fighting all the time. Your yeah. kid is old enough to be aware that you're fighting all the time. What's it going to take? Yeah, you're right. I uh, I don't know. I, I know I have to make a decision fast. Uh, I mean, I know I have to do that. I, I, I'm kind of just trying to process the whole situation. I'm trying to be uh, strong, and it's, uh, I'm having a hard time with that. You don't love this guy. I'm not sure, Tom. It's a question that I'm asking. I've been asking myself. If you have like, to ask it, you know the answer. You know that old line about going to a restaurant and the menu has no prices? So you yeah. ask the waiter, excuse me, how much is the Chateaubriand? And the waiter says, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. Right? Wow, well, you just op you just opened a big door for me. I, I didn't think about it that way. If you but have to think about whether you love him, you have your answer. Yeah, yep. You're right. You're right. I have my answer. Yeah, I I will do something about it. I I will. Soon. <laughs> I, I have to for my daughter's sake and my sake. I have to. I'm. I mean, it's becoming unhealthy for me. I I've lost a few pounds, <laughs> and uh, and I've been stressed, uh, and it's not good for me or my daughter. Cause I have to take care of her, and I have to be, you know, I have to be mom every day, and. It's not good for me. <laughs> I, I believe you. All right, Veronica, um, you've got work to do. Yes, i got lots of work to do. I really thank you for taking my call. I uh, Sorry I got a little emotional there. That's okay. I thank you. It's your life we're talking about here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. I appreciate it. Let us know how you make out, dear. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Veronica calling from San Diego. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Stephanie in Phoenix, you're on the Tom Like Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, that letter really struck home for me. Um, I'm uh, 35, and my husband is, which is probably going to uh, make me the perfect caller for your show. My husband is actually 10 years younger than me, and um, his parents are older parents, um, and... They are, they, I don't believe they are taking care of their situation in any way, shape, or form. His father is uh, retired on a second career. He's in his late 60s working two jobs. The mother's disabled, um, and all she does is spend. And, you know, and I can see that I'm going to be the responsible one later on in life, and it's, it's hard to deal with. And did you discuss this before you got with him? You know... I don't think that I realized, I mean, of course, you know, I didn't know their situation. They have a home, you know, you, I know that he's employed. You don't know about someone's parents' financial situation, I, you know, until you start really kind of looking at what's going on and you start making some, you know, realizations. I, I'm sure he hasn't made any kind of, well, my parents, you know, you can look at them and you know, I'm never going to have to take care of them. 
There's there's no issues there. They were responsible. Um, but I guess I just figured, you know, they had a home. He had, you know, two retirements. You, you don't think that it's going to be an issue. No, you, you know, many people appear to have money. But, uh, but by God, go over to Scottsdale. You see people who are in hock up to their eyeballs. They've got bigger houses than they can afford. And they've got beautiful cars, but they're only leased. Oh, I know. I don't understand people's math. I mean, in my world, one and one equals two. Yeah, well, but, but in the real, <laughs> but uh, dear, in the real world today, many people appear to be much more affluent than they are. Oh yeah, and I just I I do think this is a real issue. I think with some of these baby boomers um, that are at this this age where they're going to be retiring, they're in, in no way are they ready for retirement. And if they think that their children, who of course a lot of them aren't that successful either are and uh, probably not successful with money keeping because they didn't watch their parents be successful at it um how are they going to manage and it it is bad and i can't even imagine my mother-in-law living with me i think it would probably be the end of my marriage have you told him that oh my god yeah uh, uh, what does, I, what he, does he, he say he well he agrees he'd probably kill himself <laughs> so. well, 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 but he has control over it well, I don't know if it's ever going to happen. If they're ever, if she's ever going to have to but, live with us, but he, not. but he needs to make a, to just say no today, so that you don't have to have this conversation when it's all emotional and irrational later on. Well, the biggest problem is that she is not uh, competent. I, I don't. Think I'm not saying I, you need to have the conversation with her. You need to have it with your husband. Well, I understand that, but I mean she isn't. So I don't know until we're in a situation. And let's say his father passes on. I don't think that we really know what kind of situation we're going to be in. Well, wait a minute. You 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 can just decide in advance. You're not going to be in that situation. Yeah. Uh, well, it it just you know what do you do? You know, if something happens, you fly down there and you know that her and her ten cats are going to, you know, live in a in a in a horrible situation. I mean, what kind of responsibility do you take on being the child? Well. <laughs> That's hard. It's hard when you know that the person's probably not going to be healthy mentally. I have told people I am with in the past, if you think your parents are going to need help down the line, you better get a second job and start putting money in a separate account for that. Yeah. yeah Point blank, because yeah. I'm not going to pay for that. Then that's how I feel. I, I really don't want to be in that situation. However... Um, I, I do think it is scary. I think it, it is scary for people, you know, that are like myself, you know, where there is, I, I really have no clue as to how they're going to be financially. And when I did ask, I don't, I, when I did ask the father and, you know, I, I really got the question, the, the, the response of, well, she may not be around, meaning she'll be mentally unstable uh, if uh, something were to happen to him. Well, that's, you know, I don't want that guilt on me. So it's it's hard. It's definitely hard. Mm -hmm. Good luck dealing with that. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You have low self-esteem because you felt you needed to buy her a huge diamond ring in order to keep her. Exactly. Oh, no, yes, no, you could no. not have said it better. It's a big no. diamond penis. That's what it is. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show. Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show, at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Talking about a letter he received from a John Doe. And Mr. Doe says that uh, while his in-laws are wonderful, he knows they don't have any cash and that uh, when it comes time for them to retire, they're going to come knocking. And when they do, he's leaving. <laughs> Who can blame him? 1-800-5800-TOM from Phoenix. It's Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? This is Chris. Great. Hey, brother. Just want to tell you, man, I like your show. I'm a new listener. Uh, man, you got some interesting topics of conversation, man. Thank you. Um, hey, what I was, uh, I don't argue with the guy's ideas and what he's thinking. If you got family who necessarily 
is going to want what you have or needs help or they're getting kind of greedy or it's going to take away from what you have or put you in a bad position. i got no problem with that. But I also feel, just to argue the other side, I also do feel a little bit like, depending on your relationship with your wife, with their family, like you have a little bit of responsibility towards them. Why do you, uh, why do, why do you have responsibility to her family? Well, let's just take my wife, for example. Uh, we've been married for like three years. Um, we've been together for 10 years. Just from the aspect that they now, after being with them for basically essentially 10 years, they've helped raise me. They've helped provide for me. They've been there for me. What do you mean? They, wait, 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 wait. They helped raise you? Yeah. Like just, just things like morals and decisions, things in that, that wait, nature. Wait, like, wait, like, wait, wait. How old were you when you met them? Well, when I met them, I was 18. And you didn't know anything about morals? Yes, I did. I did. But everybody in your life kind of helps guide you to a certain extent. And when you're that young, too, you still need a little bit of guidance and help with decision-making, just like your own family guides you. And uh, they don't do anything to uh, prepare for the future, uh, uh, save, invest, plan. Uh, it's all your responsibility. No, not so that's what I'm saying. It's not necessarily all my responsibility, but I do feel like just as if my own mother need help, this woman's mom has become like my own mother, and I would do things to help her. I wouldn't necessarily wreck my life to help her, but I would do things to help her. She like what? At school. what? What would you do? What would I do? Well, like right now, we're just setting aside money, and I would like to help her out in the future. If she gets to the point she's 55 years old. Why isn't she? Wait, wait. Why isn't she setting aside money? She, you know what she is, but some people are just not basically as blessed as other people are to make as much money, have certain systems set up. Oh, let me give, I, let me get, no, let me that's give ridiculous. That. She's lived all her life up to age 55, which she's done just fine. She, she works at a school, and it, she runs an after-school program. She's a lunch woman. She's a great woman. Um, she's got three kids. And basically, I know they're saving, but, I mean, when it comes to that point, when you get older, sometimes people need help. And I will do that only because them. they didn't uh, plan and invest and save like you're doing. Right, right. No, I, I hear you and I understand that. I also feel like so, this is just for discussion. I also feel like there's a slight cultural difference, just to be kind of conversational or interesting. I do feel like the first lady who called, she had family from Mexico. I do feel like for whatever reason, Mexican Americans or Hispanics, whether it's they're not making enough money or they're attached to mom and dad at the hip, I do feel that Hispanics are generally a little bit closer or have a little bit tighter relationship with their parents for whatever reason. Yeah, but guess what? That caller you're referring to, she was uh, Mexican also. Mm -hmm. No, I totally understand that. And she sounded like those people were totally trying to mooch off her. Gimme, 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 gimme. And that's something, like I said, a little bit different. But like with my example... We're going to save money, and hopefully when I build the next house, I would like to build a little house in the backyard for her just from the aspect that, like I said, I was young when we met. We grew up. She helped provide for me, guide me. I was young, man. And there comes the aspect when your parents get old, you're going to have to take care of them at some point. I'll do what I can to take care of them. Well, you know, you gonna... don't have to. First of all, uh, let's just start at the, uh, the extreme end. Some okay. people's parents were violent or abusive. Yeah. I mean, no, you do not have to do that. That's something that's a gift. Right, that is true. And you do have to look at each individual relationship with that person, because I'm not talking about just a mom. could be a brother or something like that, but I guess it just depends on your relationship with that person, how you feel about them, I guess what you're willing to do. Are you the type of person that is going to hang them out to dry, or are you the type of person that's going to help them Hang out? them out to dry? I mean, you, you had nothing to do with this. I feel, like I said, that's the a, that's a difference I feel in a relationship with my family. And like I said, some people don't have that. Some people just want to get their family, put them in a, re a retirement home, forget about them, and that's it. You know, and, and that's how it is. And I'm not dogging them either. I just feel like I have a responsibility to help out my own family, like I would help out my sister or my mom. But it only goes to a certain extent. You know, like you said, if they're a druggie, they're fiending, I'm going to help them what I, what, how I can, but I'm not necessarily going to break my life for them. And like I said, with my mom or my stepmom, I guess I should say, or to the in-law, with my in-law, I would like to help her out what I can just because she has become family to me, and that's how I feel about family. So, and, and like I said, you know, it's, good for, it's, it's funny for me because for the cultural difference, my mother is Hispanic, my dad is Caucasian, and when his mom was to the point where she couldn't take care of herself, they put her in a care home. Okay, with my mom or like my in-law, 
They just that's just the way it is for Hispanics, man. They just want to take care of their family. And I like I said, I don't know if it's necessarily because they didn't make enough money or they had too many kids for their own good and couldn't spend all the right well, money. Well, my attitude about it is that if you want to take care of if I'm married to you, God forbid, if I'm married <laughs> to you, then yes, if you want to take care of your family, go ahead and yes. do it, but don't expect me to do it. No, and I wouldn't expect it, and expecting it is wrong. Well, let me but tell you something. You, women <laughs> women of, of Latin descent, uh, the minute they uh, forget about marrying you, the minute they move in with you, Yes, sir. They suddenly believe that that is also my responsibility. And if you married that woman, then I sure hope you guys talked about it up to that point. Well, I, 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 as I have you... said, I had one woman who I had to put it in the prenup. Yeah. Oh, no totally, no it, loans it, it, to your family, no gifts to your family, no plane yeah. tickets to your family. Yeah. Uh, they're not living here. And, um, and, and I promised also that I would do the same with my own family. Yeah, and if that's how, and that's how it is, you, know, you guys need to get that stuff worked out way before you get married. Because if you guys get married and you have that difference of opinion, oh, you guys not gonna make it, man. That's right. Wrong. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. But out of curiosity, man, you said about your mom also about not visiting you. Um, Twenty years. Um, how do you feel about that? I, I wasn't happy about it at all. My uh, family had the attitude that they lived in New York, and everybody comes to New York eventually. So if, yeah. if we'll see each other when you come here. Yeah. Because I see a lot of people like that, and it's interesting not to go back to it, but it's interesting. It's just that I feel a lot of Caucasian people that I know it is like that. They want, They can't wait till they're 18 to get out of their house. They can't wait to move out, get away from their parents. They don't talk to them much. You know, and then for us, it's like we see our parents a lot. We like to spend time with them. They're our family, and we love them, and that's how it is with us. doesn't have to be like that for everybody. doesn't mean you're wrong if you want to do it the other way. Personally, I just feel that with my family, you do have some obligations to try and help them out. That's that is definitely a cultural difference, no doubt about it, and I'm very, very well aware of it. Chris, thank you for calling in from Phoenix. Let's say hi to Ken in Tempe on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yes, sir. Hey, you got a good topic today thank you yeah the the thing i would say to the guy who wrote the letter is he better write it down and put his name on it and then talk to his wife about it and make sure she's real clear that that's not going to be an option well i i think everybody should have a prenup and then this stuff is discussed and understood before the marriage but the uh, people keep telling me they don't need prenups and here's an example of why everybody needs a prenup well even not even a prenup, but he's in it right now, it sounds like. No, so but they, it do, should have been discussed before they got married. Oh, sure, it could have been. I wouldn't have thought of that, but yeah, it's a good topic to discuss. But right now, what he needs to do is write it down and get her to agree so that there is no ambiguity. Because he can't just leave if it doesn't work out. Oh, well, <laughs> yes, he can. Well, he can, but he would lose his shorts. Well, he's going to lose his shorts uh, because he's been married 15 years in the state of California. Right. He's going to lose his shorts. But if he puts it in writing that I love my wife, I love my family, my immediate family comes first, this is not an option for me. He puts it in writing, gets it certified, and they can actually do a post-nup probably. Oh, well, what's the incentive for the wife to do that? Well, it, it just states his position. Because you know, what is the incentive for the wife to sign anything? Oh, no, I'm not saying to sign it. He just, that's his position. Then if it ever gets to the point where they're divorcing and this is an issue, he can use that to say, hey, I'm not trying to destroy the family. I just can't support the, you know, the 10 in-laws. Well, guess what? Unless he got her signature on a document, it's not going to matter what he writes down. Mm, you can, you can... Put uh, divorce courts and stuff are weird. I've been through it, and it they'll take stuff that you 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 legitimately try to convey your your you know your thoughts, and that's that was my point. And instead of writing, you know, it's good he wrote to you because you got a good topic, but he needs to sit down and not talk to his wife, but write it down, and then even give a copy to their in laws because uh, you know everybody has different situations. Well, that will be the fight of the century. Trust me on that. Our email address is my name. You're going to need it. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. And if for any reason you can't hear our show, it does stream live on our website. That's BlowMeUpTom.com.
Tom Likas Show.